Hello and welcome to Hexed Encountered. My name is Joe. Today we're going to take a little break from Tanktoberfest since October is almost over and we're going to throw a bone to all the sport game fans out there who've probably been missing some sports content here on the channel by looking at a game called Stone Cold Hockey. This is a fairly new game, came out a few weeks ago uh, from Stone Mountain Press. Here's the uh, instruction manual. I got the uh, PDF edition, as you can see here. So I printed all this out myself. Uh, comes with <clears throat> several charts. So we have a we have this chart here. This is a single-sided chart um, with, you know, basically we'll go over this, how the attacks and everything work. And then this one we have some more for the puck battle, which is another key component of the game. Uh, we have stamina level tracks here, and we'll talk about that as well. We have a two uh, flips, uh, what they call a flip chart here with the power play, an empty net on one side, and a couple other things down here at the bottom. And then on the other side, we have fights and penalties. Uh, we also have a timing, if I can pick it up, a timing aid and quick reference card. On the other side of that, we have a flow chart that kind of describes how the game works. So you roll the, um, you know, basically it says here you roll a timing die D6 and one D20, which is the battle die. You can use either D20. Mark the time on the score sheet. Is the battle die result equal to or greater than the puck battle threshold? If it is, you go down here and do a puck battle. If it's not, you go through an attack sequence. And then this is, this, this is excellent because it really goes through exactly how the game works. Um, when I bought the game, I bought it comes with some fictional teams, and it actually has a full-blown kind of fictional league element to it where you can create an entire league and go progress through history and everything, which is really neat. Um, there is also a digital version of this coming out, which will be programmed by Richard Hanna of Rue Games, uh, who's kind of been like almost the go-to guy of board game to... Uh, digital PC game kind of conversions. He, um, sports games in general, but he's done things like second and 10, um, and, uh, legends of boxing, which is also from stone mountain press. So, uh, I, as I said, I bought the 83, 84 season. So I printed this out here and, uh, we have Edmonton and, and New York. So we have basically the two arguably or almost, certainly the two best teams in the league um with some uh, obviously with the, with the oilers you have some serious firepower um the control numbers the attack number is off the charts you can see that the you know the islanders are also really strong but edmonton is is pretty ridiculous offensively and you would you would probably be able to know why if you know their roster um I, obviously, these guys are like you go five, six deep with Hall of Famers right off the top. Um, not that the Islanders were any slouches. They had they were coming off four straight Stanley Cups themselves. So um, I just wanted to kind of give a brief layout of the game. And then I'm going to do I'll, do, I'll fill out a score sheet here and we will go through some some of the game. The, uh, the game's designer, Gary Brown, he's done several videos that show the game and the various elements of it. Um, I don't want to duplicate his efforts too much, but I do. I, the difference with mine will be that I'll be using the, uh, the Oilers and the Islanders, you know, just a, like a real life kind of play there between the, uh, between the Stanley Cup contenders. Okay, so here you see our score sheet. So far, all I've put in there are the uh, teams themselves. So here at the bottom, you can see this is the goal. These are the goalies. This is obviously the rain, uh, the Islanders rather. <laughs> Woo, uh, Billy Smith. Um, that's his rating, and then you have a, basically a percentage for starts, and then we have the same thing over here for Edmonton between Grant Fuhr and Andy Moog. Um, so what I will do is I will roll two dice, uh, a percentile dice and a D10. They're both D10s, but you know what a percentile dice is. So we'll roll for New York first. And we have a 10 and a two, so that's a uh, 12. So that will be Billy Smith. So I'll write Smith in here. And then we will roll again for Edmonton. And 
they get a 99. So that is going to be Mo, uh, Moog. Andy Moog. So that's our goalie matchup. And actually, Fjord and Moog have the, uh, the same exact goal rating. So that's not that big of a deal, actually. All right, so next we have to fill out the, the top sections here for control and attack, aggression, defense, etc., etc. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is figure out the control range for both teams. So here and on Edmonton, they're the home team, so their control range their control rating is 12, which is excellent. New York's control rating for a road or away team is 7. Now we have to look at the chart. Here there's a handy dandy chart for control ranges. So you take the home con control minus the visiting control. So we're looking at 12 minus 7, which is a difference of 5. So 5 or 6, visiting range is 1 to 8, and home range is 9 to 20. So for the visiting range, we write in 1 to 8 and 9 to 20 for the home team. Okay. Pretty straightforward. Okay, next, and this is somewhat optional. You can see here on the chart we have attack, defense, aggressive, power play, penalty kill ratings, and we have slots for those on the score sheet as well. Now, during the game, events will happen that will actually change these ratings. So um, there are three slots here, and you could do first period, second period, third period. So that's what I'll do. I'll fill these in for the first period for both teams. And then um, as the game goes on, those ratings may change. Okay, next we figure out the puck battle. As you can see, I entered in the, the, ra the ratings here for the, for the teams for the start. Now, the way puck battle works is you add the aggressive ratings, so 7 and 8, of both sides and look up the result on the puck battle table. So here is the puck battle table. Now, the Islanders' aggression rating is 7, and the Edmonton Oilers is 8. So, therefore, we're looking at 15, um, and the range is 13 or more. So, I'll just write 13 in here. And so, anything on the D20 roll that's 13 or higher will result in a uh, puck battle. And we'll talk about what that means as we play the game. Okay, so I've zoomed out a bit, so obviously your view is a little bit further away from everything, but that's because I just wanted you to see all the charts. I'll pick things up and show you as we go along where it's necessary, you know, whenever it's necessary to actually see some result on the charts. I may not always do that so that we can keep things moving, because once you get the flow of things, you'll see how the, how the play works, and you won't necessarily need to see what's exactly on the chart, because I'll just be referring to it. So basically, we roll a 20-sided die and a d6 to kick off each sequence. Now, the six-sider will determine how many minutes come off the clock. So basically, this is not a full play game where you're going to have results for every minute of every game. You're going to have maybe six minutes where you'll have one thing happen, and other times you might have one minute, two minutes, three minutes. That's what the d6 is for. So each... Each uh, number on the on the D6 will refer to how many minutes have elapsed. So obviously we start at 20 and count down. If I roll a 1, we'll be in the 19th minute. A 2 would be in the 18th minute and so on. So I'm going to roll the two dice. We rolled a 2 and a 12. So the 2 indicates that 2 minutes have elapsed. And the 12 indicates that... Uh, because we did not hit the um, we did not hit the the puck battle threshold of 13 that this is going to be an attack sequence for one of the teams. This here is the chart that we'll be using. This is the attack charts. So you have column A, column B, column C. The way we activate this is we roll two 20 sided dice. Now because I didn't buy the game itself, I bought the PDF. I'm using my own dice and I only have a really small D20 and a big D20. So we'll use the big one as the uh, first die or the red die, and the other one will be what the um, will be the second die, basically. So I'm going to roll them both, and we have a three and a one. Okay. So actually, we have a three and a seven. It's far away, and it's that tiny die, so it looks like a one to me. So basically, what we do is we look at. 
the um, the first the, the big die here has a number three. So we compare that to the control range, and we know that the Islanders have a control range of eight, one to eight. So the Islanders have control. Then you look at the other die, in this case the small die, which is a seven, and you refer that to the a team's defensive rating. And if it's lower than that, and Edmonton's a one, so it's not, then we would use the D column D, the defense column, to resolve the attack. So we have an Islanders attack. I'm going to roll my D, my two D10s to get a D100 result here. And we have a 27. So we start in column A. So let me pick this up. So we're starting here in column A, and we're going to be on 27, which says attack six plus scores, big pressure, then a wraparound slammed home. So the Islanders' attack rating is a nine, so they just scored a goal in the uh, second minute of the game. The directions actually suggest rolling the D100 first to see who would score the goal if they score, but I'm going to do it after. So here on the, on the Islanders, they have, you can see, percentile basically down through 99, zero, zero through 99. To determine who scored, we rolled a 79. If we look at 79, look who it is. Pat LaFontaine. So the youngster, he was young at that point, scores. Then we could roll for the assists. And for the assists, there's actually a chart here with uh, right here. So here we have an assist chart. So we roll to see how many assists there are, basically. So we'll roll a D20. We got a four. So four is one assist. And if it ends up being Pat LaFontaine again, then it would actually be an unassisted goal. So we're going to roll our, our percentile dice again, and we got a 13. So a 13 in the assist column is Brian Trottier. So that would be LaFontaine from Trottier, one assist, one nothing Islanders. There's also a method for figuring out the timing. So you can roll a D3, which basically I just take a D2, a D6 rather, and divide it by two. To, uh, to get a one through three number, which would give you the segment within a minute. So it breaks the minutes into 20 second segments and then you roll a D20 and you just add them together to get the, uh, the, the actual seconds of the score. I'm not gonna do that because I don't think I need that level of detail for this particular demonstration. So we will go back to our original uh, die roll where we roll the, uh, the D20 and the D6 together. And we get a 4 and a 14 this time. So that's going to be a puck battle. So here on our here on our score sheet, we, we go down four more minutes. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So we're in minute 14. And I'll circle the B because it's a puck battle. Like so. And so when we have a puck battle, things work a little bit differently than they do when we're just having an attack sequence. We are going to be using the percentile dice again. So our 10 and our D10, they're both D10s really. And we have the puck battle chart here with three columns based on four columns really, based on the period and overtime and then a result. So I'm gonna roll these and we got an 006. So that's a six. And if I can get this to pick up here, if I can show you. 02 to 24 is aggression, aggression check, minor penalty, also deal one hit. Okay, so what does that mean? So who whose aggression are we checking? First of all, right? That's your first question. So we roll a D20 for both teams, and we add the aggression modifier to the result of the more aggressive side. The higher result deals hits and goal, go, gets pain, penalized accordingly. So we rolled a 14 uh, for the Islanders and an 11 for the uh, Oilers. So 11 plus 8 aggression for the Oilers is a 19. 14 plus 7 for the Islanders is a 21. So the Islanders will take the penalty and deal one hit. So that's going to actually knock the stamina of Edmonton down by one level. So it's kind of a good and bad thing. So now we're going to actually have a power play, which changes kind of how some of this works here. We have a power play chart. And so that's going to that's going to be where we resolve our result as opposed to doing the normal attack sequence and puck battle sequence. So we're going to use the power play chart here. 
And you basically, you roll a D, you roll your percentile dice to get a zero, zero through 99 result. And then it's going to have, it's going to occur in one of these columns. But you need to first determine what the, which, uh, which unit has the advantage, the power play unit or the penalty kill unit. So we know Edmonton's on the power play. Their power play rating is a nine. The Islanders' penalty kill rating is a six. So that's a plus three for Edmonton. So we're going to be rolling in this plus three plus or four column. So we rolled our we roll our percentage dice and we got a 35. So we go to 35 and you see that results in a slot chance. Now we go to the chance chart, which is over here. And you can see on our chance chart slot. So we'll roll another D, D100 and see what happens here. So we'll roll our percentage dice. We got an 88. So an 88 is save made with any goal rating. So the goalie makes the save. So that's the first minute of the power play. So I will put this down for a save. And then for the second power play minute, we just repeat the process. So we roll again. We got a 48. So again, we're looking in the same column, 48. Here's 48. Attacking stamina is greater than defense, crease chance, otherwise point chance. Actually, the stamina is lower for the attacker in this case, so they get a point chance, which is obviously a worse chance than a crease chance. So we'll roll again, and we get a 49, and a 49 on a point chance is goal, rating 5 plus save, otherwise scores. Billy Smith's goal rating is a 9, so that is a save. So they come up empty. The Oilers do not manage to tie the game on the power play. And we go back to the base sequence. So we roll our 6 and our 20 again. 3 and 14, so we're going to have another puck battle. And we're going to mark off 3 more minutes. 1, 2, 3, so that we're in the 9 minutes remaining. Okay, so we are back on the puck battle chart. I'm going to circle the B here. And now we will roll um, our percentile dice to determine here. And we're still in the first period, so we'll be using the first column. And we get a 26, which is an aggressive check, minor penalty, and injury. Deal one hit, then roll injury effect for the power play team. So again, we roll our two D20s. I'll do the Islanders first. We roll an 11, plus their 7 aggression is an 18. Edmonton gets a 16 plus an 8 is 26. So this penalty is going to be on Edmonton. And now we have to roll for the injury check as well. And the Islanders will take a hit. So they're going to, stamina is going to go down to a 9. So injury effects in this game are abstracted. And what you get is basically an impact on the team's rating. We, we don't go into specifics of who was hurt or whatever. So down here you have an injury effects. And you roll the d20, and that'll determine what, what you get, what effect it has. So I'm going to roll the d20. We got an 11, so an 11 is a minus 1 to defense. So that's a minus 1 to the Islanders' defense. So I'm going to reduce it to a 4. I'll just erase it here and make it a 4. And now we move on to uh, the power play. So once again, the first thing we're going to look at is power play and penalty kill ratings. And it looks like we've got an 8 for the Islanders power play and a 6 for Edmonton's penalty kill. So that's a difference of 2. So that's going to actually be in this third column here. The plus 1 or 2 column. So again, we roll our percentile dice. We got a 26. The 26 in that row is a crease chance. So now we go to our chance again. We roll our dice and we got an 8. And an 8 is goal plus 12, otherwise score. I mean goal plus save. Goal 12 or higher save. Sorry, I can't read tonight. Goal 12 or higher save, otherwise score. Um, so the goalie for Edmonton, Andy Moog, only has an 8. So that is a goal for the Islanders. So now we will roll to see. Who scored the goal? And we get an 8 again. And that's going to be Mike Bossy. So Mike Bossy scores the goal. Now we'll roll for the assist. So we roll the D20 for that. It's a 7. So on a 7, you get two assists. Choose nearest forward for the first assist. Then roll the assist column for the second assist. 
So the nearest forward for Bossy would be Trottier. And then we'll roll um, our percentile again for the second assist. And we get a five, which ends up being Bossy. So that's just going to be a one assist goal after all. So let me note this down and then we will proceed. We restart our sequence. D6, D20. We rolled a five and a six. So that is going to be on the attack uh, attack chart. So we know five minutes come off. So we go down from seven, six, five, four, three. We're at three. We're in the attack chart. And we roll the, um, the D20 again to determine control. And it's a uh, nine. So a nine is right at the bottom of Edmonton's control range. So they get control. Okay. So now we're going to roll on the attack here. We'll roll our percentile dice. We get a 98. So a 98 is back-to-back -back saves made. Goalie is in the zone. Increased goal by one. So that's going to bump Billy Smith up to a 10. And I'll put back-to-back uh, -back saves by Smith. And we proceed. Now if I roll anything higher than a 3, the period is over. I rolled a three and a two. So we're going to have another attack sequence here in the last minute. So again, we roll the D20. We rolled a 17. So this again is Edmonton. And then we roll um, our um, percentile dice and roll a 36. So attack eight plus scores, wicked shot rattles, rattles in off the blocker side. So Edmonton scores. And we'll see who scored the goal. We get a 26. So that would be Glenn Anderson. So Anderson scores. And now we'll roll for the assist. So we roll our D20. We roll a two. So that would be one assist. And we roll a 35, and the 35 in the assist range goes to Paul Coffey. So that's Anderson from Coffey, and it makes it 2-1. to one. So that is the end of the first period. So I'm actually going to stop here because I don't want this to become overly long. I just wanted to kind of give you guys a feel for how the game plays. Uh, depending on how this video does, I may come back to it and finish this game. So you can uh, we can go through the whole game and you know see everything. Um, but you see that the game flows very quickly. Um, this is a really well-designed game. And again, it's not going to give you every single stat. It's not going to give you shots and it's not going to give you penalties um, by player. There are probably systems you could do to figure some of that stuff out if you really wanted to kind of bolt it on. Um, I would like to do a second video talking about the fictional league system that's in this game, which I think is excellent. And I'll tell you right now, when Richard Hanna's um, digital version comes out, I will be picking that up because I think the system is fabulous. And um, there are some things computers do better than people. I like the ability to play this. You know, I like the ability to roll some dice and, and have that tactile experience. But sometimes it's good just to play uh, a game on a PC without having to set anything up or get out cards or roll dice or whatever. Um, just quick and dirty and have everything tracked for you. So I'm, I am really looking forward to seeing how Mr. Hanna does with this conversion of what is a very, very good game by Gary Brown of uh, Stone Mountain Press. So again, this is uh, Stone Cold Hockey. This has been the first period of a game between the 83-84 Edmonton Oilers and the 83-84 New York Islanders. So, as always, thank you for watching. If you would, please consider liking, sharing, and or subscribing to my channel. That would be greatly appreciated. My name is Joe. This has been Hexed Encountered. And until next time, happy gaming.